You're listening to episode six of A Whole New You podcast. On today's show, we have an interview with Margaret Berry, a certified fitness trainer and nutritional therapy practitioner. She shares with us the benefits of T-TAP exercise and how these unique workouts support our health in various ways. She also discusses the importance of nutrition in balancing hormones. Welcome to A Whole New You podcast. I'm your co-host, Kim Maravich. I'm a registered nurse and author of the book, 360 Health. I'm joined by my dear friend, Lori Biddle, a health and wellness coach certified through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Our show exists to inspire and empower women to take charge of their health with weekly tips and conversation about self-care, mindset, nutrition, fitness, and clean living. Please keep in mind that the material provided in this podcast is intended as general information only and should not be used as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. We're thrilled to have you here. Let's get to the show. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to a new show. We are really excited to have a special guest with us today. Margaret Berry is here with us, and I'd like to just read her bio, and then we'll get into an interview. I think she has a lot to teach us today, so much to learn, so we want to get right into the interview. So Margaret Berry is a certified TTAP trainer. She's a certified fitness trainer and nutritional therapy practitioner. She lives in Western North Carolina with her husband and one-year-old daughter, an avid researcher in the field of holistic health and corrective exercise. She is passionate about helping women feel strong, comfortable, and confident in their bodies by teaching the TTAP method of exercise, in addition to offering personalized nutrition counseling. She works with women of all ages, teaching in-person lessons, as well as classes via web streaming. Specializing in fitness and nutrition for pregnancy and postpartum, Margaret loves helping women achieve balance in their bodies before, during, and after pregnancy. Wow. Welcome, Margaret. You are a wealth of information. Can't wait to hear what all you have to offer today. Thanks for being here. thank Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, sure. And I know Lori just wanted to welcome you on too. <laughs> I'm super excited to learn something today. So I will be. Yes. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Audience. Yeah. yeah. And it's nice to finally like, cause I know you all, you know, from Instagram and it's nice to actually be like, oh, here's their voices and they're here. So it's, it's like I, meeting. It's the, it's the 21st century version of meeting somebody, I guess. So. I know. <laughs> it's like a first date. <laughs> yeah, it is. I know. I, I know Margaret and I have cor- corresponded quite a bit, um, you know, email and Instagram and I love following her on Instagram, but this, this brings it to a whole new level. So we're just really excited to have you here. Now, Margaret, you are a T-TAP trainer, and I would probably believe that a lot of our listeners do not know what T-TAP is, or even if they've heard it, they probably have not tried it. So could you just tell us a little bit about what T-TAP is? Yes, absolutely. So uh, T-TAP is not tap dancing or <laughs> it, you know, tapping in any way, really. Um, it's, it's actually more than a workout. It's it's a rehabilitative method of fitness that really works for all ages, all fitness levels. Uh, it requires no equipment, and you can do it in as little as just 15 minutes a day in your own home. And really, you know, TTAP is so has there's so much there, and there's so much that's great that I love about TTAP. But there's really three main components that make TTAP so effective, and. I would say there's the, the three of them are the first one is um, neurokinetic flow. So it, this is the movement from the brain to the spine, to the extremities of the nervous system. And Teresa designed all the T-TAP workouts to center on the spine. So when you center on the spine, you can get full fiber activation of all the muscles that attach to the spine, which would be all of them <laughs> from the, and you get those mm-hmm. activation from the muscles from the spine to the shoulder, the muscles from the spine to the hip. And when you get that spine aligned and when you get it communicating well through the nervous system with all of the muscles, it, it's kind of like, I like to make the analogy of, it's like watering the flowers if you have a kinked garden hose. You'll still be watering them, mm-hmm. but it's not quite as effective because you're not getting enough water pressure to really maximize that hydration. And if you unkink the hose, And in this case, it's analogous with getting the spine in alignment and unkinking the spine. You can get that done in 
you know, half the time. So it's the main communicator. The spine is the main communicator from your brain to all of your muscles. And that nerve stimulation is what causes our muscle fibers to twitch and activate. So if you get that aligned, you can get greater nerve stimulation to all of your muscles and they work more efficiently. And then you have higher energy. Um, and so that's why Teresa actually implements the neurokinetic flow in every move. And the second part is the lymphatic system. So I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but um, Teresa stimulates the lymphatic system through the entire workout. And most people understand the lymphatic system um, with regards to removal of toxins, boosting the immune system. But another thing that the lymphatic system does that Teresa really kind of honed in on was that it has the ability to move liquefied fats throughout the body. So if you do a move that simulates the lymphatic system, then you're circulating those liquefied fats through the whole body. So you're actually getting more of that fat to be burned for energy. So that's how you, you know, activate your lymphatic system more. You actually get more fat burning activation for less time. And that's fascinating. Yeah, it's really, it, there it's is, as you can see, there's like a lot involved in it. But the, the third part of it is that the exercise movements are more comprehensive. They kind of give you more bang for your buck, so to speak. So um, that's why you don't have to do a lot to see results. You can do, you know, 15 minutes a day, every other day, or if you really geek out on it, like I do, you can do a little bit every day. <laughs> and, and really yeah. she designs it so that with that nerve transmission, you get more muscles activated she targets five to seven different muscles at one time, which is also why it's complicated at first. Um, but it gives you yes. equal activation from the origin of the muscle to the insertion of the muscle throughout mm -hmm. the entire movement. And she goes layer by layer from the inside out. So it's different than other exercises, like, for example, a bicep curl, where you're loading up the weight to activate the belly of the muscle, the center of the muscle with the way Teresa does it, you are getting uh, activation on both sides of the muscle, all through the muscle. So you get long, lean muscles without bulk. So you don't actually get a lot of bulky muscle. You get really long, lean, and dense muscle tissue. So you kind of create your own muscle girdle um, from the inside out with TTAP. And of course, the more muscle you carry, uh, the higher your resting metabolic rate is, and the more glucose you'll have at rest. So it's all, it's all, um, brings it together to make TTAP really effective for a lot of different people as well. And that is really so interesting. I don't mean to cut you off, but what, what I do want to say real quick, Margaret, is that, um, when I first heard of TTAP, um, I do, you, I'm sure, you know, the, the blogger wellness mama, yes. she has a yes. podcast. Oh yes. So she, I, yeah, she's very pretty famous. Um, I had, read, I think it was a blog of hers years back that she was doing this. And, um, she was talking about, she has like six children and was talking about doing this mm -hmm. postpartum. And it, it piqued my interest because after I had my second son, um, I had some recovering to do and was looking for some kind of exercise that was, um, was gentle and wasn't involving like running or jumping or, uh, deep squatting or, or, or right. things like that, because I needed to recover. And so I heard about this. And when I bought the DVDs, I was sort of like, and, and I think, I, and you would know better than I do, but I just bought like maybe the basic, um, you know, the, I don't, I don't know if it's called like basic T-tap. Um, and I, and it was, it was just so weird yeah. to me in a way, because I had never seen anything like it. And I thought, well, what is this? what is this exactly? Because there were all these moves and you're just doing them standing yes. up and there are no, um, you know, no bands or weights or anything. And I really wasn't sure what I was doing. And I think I was, I was kind of turned off, but then more recently, I think I, you know, I discovered you on Instagram mm -hmm. and have been reading other people doing this. And so, you know, Margaret was very generous to help me kind of find um, some more, uh, a another DVD um, that actually, I, and, you, and you know the name of it, it's something to do with mm -hmm. yes. hor hormones yes. and, and actually has the word menopause, menopausal yes. in yes. it. Yes, healthy Does hormones for or, menopause okay. management. Yes. Okay, right. And I'm not in menopause yet, but I will tell you, and again, I'm sorry to, to get off track from what you were saying, oh, no, no, but yeah. guys, guys, this 
is not easy. Yeah. And you feel, and I'm not saying it's not hard, like um, a strenuous, you know, like take your breath away kind of workout, but it makes you think of the position that you are in. Now, Teresa, that, and I, I would like to talk about her for just a moment in, in, in a second, because you brought up her name, yeah. um, but she is, you know, leading these DVDs and she does talk very quickly through some of the, the, um, the exercises and the motions. And it's like, um, <laughs> And lift your ribs and, yes. <laughs> you know, tuck in your, in your tummy and bend your knees and knees out. And, uh, it, and it's, it's kind of like, whoa, but you are, you're doing, you're holding your body in these positions that you probably most likely do not do on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but wow, do you feel the muscles activating when you're doing it? I did, um, I looked on your uh, website, Margaret, yeah. um, cause you had done, I don't know if it was in your Instagram stories or an Instagram post and you had linked to something on your website. And it was a five minute like oh, lymphatic. Yes. The plie. Um, yes. 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 I remember yes. that. Yeah. And, um, and it was, and there was one with the, um, the shoulder or the shoulder or the, what, what are the muscles? <laughs> oh, the, lat, the, the lats. Yes. The, the lats. The lats. Yes. Yes. And I felt so much taller after doing this and I could feel those lats activating. And even when I was done, I felt like I was standing taller. Mm -hmm. I felt like my back was stronger. And if someone was watching me, they would think I was not doing a thing. Yes. But I'll tell you the power that comes from inside from doing that is incredible. Yes. Oh, Do you absolutely. agree? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I used to, how I actually got into T-TAP was I had been doing all of the high intensity stuff. CrossFit, um, okay. running yeah. hills, lifting weights, everything. And I had, my mom had actually started doing T-TAP because she found it on a, mm. like a mom forum. Um, and she started yeah. doing it. And I thought it just looked like the most ridiculous thing I'd ever seen. And I didn't even give it the time of day for a couple of weeks. And then she said, hey, yes. you should come try this move with me. And I tried it and it was hard. I mean, I, you know, I was looking in yeah. there at her thinking, oh, this is, this is so easy. And it wasn't until I read her book, the her book that she has called Fit and Fabulous in 15 Minutes, it explained more of like the physiology behind the moves. And that's kind of when I was like, oh, maybe there is something, maybe there is something to this. And it's maybe better than all of this, you know, craziness that I'm doing, you know, six days a week, just beating myself down. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely harder than it looks. And yeah, it, it is. It's yes. a lot more comprehensive than most other things you'll find. It is. And I think the thing that so piques my interest um, and will pique the interest of a lot of our listeners is that there is an entire science behind it. It's not like, mm -hmm. you know, bust your butt in the gym and, you know, get your heart rate up to exceedingly high levels and jump and run. And, you know, a lot of our listeners are... Um, we have a range of listeners, Margaret. We have some um, that would be, you know, in their 20s, the whole way up to, you know, probably around my mom's age and beyond, which are in their 70s. Mm -hmm. And so I think one thing that's very nice about this exercise is that people of any age can do that. Am I right? Absolutely. Yes. Um, I think okay. that there's there's a lady um, that works out with Teresa in a lot of the videos, whose name is Barry. And she is, I believe she's 91 now. And she can do the <laughs> exercises. And she's, she is, you know, one of the rock stars where you're just like, how are you, you know, how are you yeah. doing this? And she, she loves it. And I, you know, my 13 year old brother does it. So it's mm -hmm. works for a variety of different ages and it's safe and effective for everybody. Even if you're already very fit, I actually had worked with a couple of people um, when I first was teaching classes at a CrossFit gym, T-TAP classes at a CrossFit gym, right? So wow. um, I wow. actually worked with some of the coaches there and they mm -hmm. couldn't believe it. They were shaking by the time they were done. And these yes. are big weightlifter, you know, weightlifter people. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, they couldn't believe how it really challenged their muscles, even though their muscles were already, you know, in good shape. It just added on an extra level of challenge for them. So, but at the same time, you know, your your grandma can do it. So, yeah. I've, I've seen that woman that you're talking about. She was in the video that I watched on your, on yes. your site the other it day. Is, and it, it is, it is amazing. amazing. <laughs> and doesn't yeah. that say something to how this can help not only um, flexibility, but agility and maybe even help with longevity? Absolutely. Yes. She is mm -hmm. so vibrant. She can still drive. I, um, when I went down there last year, when we were filming some stuff, she 
drove a couple of us to the trainer dinner, you know, she, she's just as vibrant as can be. And it's, it's, she's kind of who we all say we want to be when we grow up because she's just, you know, thriving and she's 91. So yeah. 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 Now Margaret has been in some videos, right, Margaret? Yes. You've been actually filmed. So Mm -hmm. she's not just a trainer. I mean, she, this girl is, is good and she's, she's been good enough to be in in the videos. Yeah. I have some projects that relating to pregnancy that we are hoping will be released Mm. early this year. So we're very excited about that. It's all, that's kind of how I got into doing more of the pregnancy, um, pregnancy Mm. stuff was through, through that. So, cause Teresa was like, Oh, we have a trainer that is pregnant and can teach. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's go forward with this. So, yeah. That's really fascinating too. And that's good to know because I think, you know, when a lot of women are pregnant, they're a little bit hesitant. They don't know exactly what's great for them to do mm-hmm. when, the, when they are pregnant, as far as exercise goes, I think, you know, maybe they know that walking is okay. Um, mm-hmm. But I think, you know, you know, and I was probably guilty of this, you know, especially in my second pregnancy. I think sometimes women just feel like, oh, well, this is like a, a good time to not work out. You know, I can just, you know, take care of the baby inside of me and eat. And, but this, um, I think, which I, I would like to get to this. Uh, we, we can actually talk about it now or we can talk about it down the road. But you did this while you were pregnant. Um, and, you know, I found it when I was postpartum. So it's gentle enough, but effective enough for those times in life. Um, but do you feel like it helped you with your pregnancy and the delivery? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. And because I actually had, um, I had a very, very fast labor. Uh, I was induced and it was two hours from start to finish. And I- that is <laughs> crazy for a first, for a first baby, Margaret. Yes. Wow. Yes. And- yeah. yeah. And, and I did, you know, I believe that TTAP really helped me for multiple reasons. Um, one, one thing was that I kind of just did what Teresa told me to do when I was pregnant, as far as mm. what, you know, cause she's worked with a lot of women before who are pregnant. And when we were developing this workout, that's going to come out this year, uh, I, we were down there filming a lot. So she had a lot of time to work with me and be like, okay, I want you to try So try this and tell me how that feels. Or, you know, it, try this and see what it does for, you know, how you feel, you know, that the baby's up in your ribs or whatnot. So um, I think that it really did help because TTAP helped keep me in alignment, which when you're in a better alignment, everything works better. All of your nerves are communicating better with your muscles. Um, And I had no, I didn't have any back pain. I didn't have any pelvic pain. You know, a lot of people get um, where your pelvis starts to split apart the SPD, um, symphys, I believe it's symphys pubis dysfunction Mm -hmm. in the middle of their pelvis. Mm -hmm. And that's really painful. I didn't have any of that. And um, when you, so Teresa teaches um, this activation of the core. And when you do it correctly, especially when you're pregnant, you will lift up the pelvic floor, you'll strengthen your abs, and you kind of create your own little muscle girdle for your baby and yourself to be strong and, you know, prevent back pain and also help you be really in good shape from your core for pushing in for postpartum as well. So, and she even said, yeah, that's really, yeah. Important. Yeah. Because I think a lot of women have, um, I mean, myself included a weak pelvic floor, especially after having mm-hmm. the baby. So this would be something, you know, if, if any ladies out there are uh, pregnant, wanting to be pregnant, or if you have a daughter who's, mm-hmm. um, you know, looking to, to become pregnant or to exercise during pregnancy, this is the, this is the thing to implement during your yes, pregnancy. It's so helpful. It can help you have less of a diastasis recti when you're all said and done. Um, it, yeah. And Teresa actually would say that when you have a baby in there and you're, you know, activating your core, you're curling your core, it's like weightlifting with your abs from the inside. <laughs> she, she was like, it's, you know, wow. it, and yeah. in the videos you can see my bump will pull in and that's my abs pulling in. Wow. And, you know, strengthening from the inside out. And also, and this is really wild. And I don't know if this had anything to do with my, like how effective my labor was. Efficient, if anything, but very effective. Um, But she also mentioned to me that when you curl your core, um, this technique that she teaches for core activation, uh, you actually, because the uterus is a muscle. And if you are activating these muscles around it, you're pulling in and up. 
you're actually going to help the uterus have stronger muscle tone. And she told me that and I was kind of like, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then I had this really, really fast mm-hmm. labor that was, I mean, the contractions were very, very, very strong. And I kind of went, well, maybe that had some, maybe that did have something to do with it. It was, was yeah. the actual toning of the uterus from her deep core activation. So whether that had anything to do with that or not, um, I don't know, mm-hmm. but I will be doing it next time for sure. So. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Well, I think, you know, that's a good point because I think we don't really think of our uterus as being a muscle until we're in labor and the contractions are happening. And then you actually feel like, whoa, you know, this is painful. And, uh, you know, here comes these like muscles that you can't even control Mm -hmm. this pain. But the thought that you could actually do something about it uh, before labor is pretty incredible, you know, that you could actually um, tone that muscle. So that's really cool. Now, before we move on, I do want to ask you, 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 you've mentioned Teresa a few times. Can you just tell us a little bit about, um, you know, who Teresa is, who Mm -hmm. Teresa was and, uh, about, you know, how she started. Yes, absolutely. So um, Teresa Tapp, she actually did pass away last year uh, in September of last year. So she had, yeah, she had, she actually, um, when she was in pre-med school, she got told by her doctors, you probably will not live past the age of 30 because of your health history with cancer. And she said, oh no, I, I, I will. <laughs> and she, she passed away at 61. Um, so yeah, but she oh. had, um, I mean, she got so much done in her life and impacted so many people yeah. through her work and through her teaching in so many positive ways. And yeah, so she was actually, she started out uh, as she was getting a pre-med degree and she studied cancer research and she later moved to doing more exercise physiology and rehabilitation. And she actually worked with cancer patients following chemotherapy. And that's when she came up with the method that is TTAP. So she actually was working with these cancer patients and found that when they did these techniques, which she credits God for giving her the insight on these techniques and how the body operates. Mm -hmm. But she noticed that when she was teaching them these techniques, Mm -hmm. they had less inflammation, better recovery, and some of them were even like, Hey, um, my pants are looser. What's I'm supposed to be gaining more Mm. weight in this process. What is going on? So they, they actually had all of these benefits and, you know, cause a lot of people talk about, Oh, T-tap inch loss. Yay. Inch loss. And it's so much more than the inch loss. Mm -hmm. We often say that the inch loss is kind of the thing that draws people to it initially. Like, Oh yes, I want to fit better in my clothes and whatnot, but she really developed it for people who had compromised uh, immune systems, people who are trying to build up their immunity, um, people with a lot of inflammation and a lot of fatigue, because all of that's very tiring. So that's how she started with TTAP. And, you know, throughout her life, she worked with, um, she actually worked with a modeling agency in Europe and she would help. She was actually in charge of getting the models back into shape after they had babies or, you know, um, regardless of where they were in their fitness journey. And that's why she started to focus on inch loss instead of weight loss. She started to realize that her models, no one really cared what they weighed. They cared if they could fit into the clothes that they were making for them to wear for a fashion show. So she could have gone on to work with, you know, very famous people and she did, but she really focused and wants to focus in her, her work, um, her legacy. She wants to reach women, the, just the everyday woman like me and like you that have kids. We have a busy schedule. Um, we want to get fit, but we don't have a lot of time. And that's kind of how she um, marketed it towards everyday women. She could have just stuck to the elite, but she wanted to bring it to everybody. So, so that's, that's interesting because it is that effective that she can even, even these women who are supposedly having, you know, these perfect bodies that she could even, um, right. You know, help them further their career. I mean, and what can that say for us? I think, you know, people are interested in inch loss, um, in general. And Mm -hmm. I know that she talks about that in her videos that you can actually, you know, just by activating your core in the right way that you can flatten that tummy, you know, to, Mm -hmm. to a large extent. Um, 
Yeah, Lori wants to ask. And something. I love that she worked with models and she worked with cancer patients. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of hitting both sides of what every woman wants, right? Like we want to be healthy and we want to heal. Um, and we want to have the ability to help other people heal. Mm-hmm. Yet we all want to look good too, right? That's so right. I love right. That this kind of addresses all of those things. That's that's yes. really cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I just and I think um also what Lori just touched on working with cancer patients, um, I would happen, I would have to think that, uh, a lot of this exercise has to do with, uh, the lymphatic drainage that you spoke about. So could you talk more about how this exercise improves, um, l- the lymphatic drainage as well as you mentioned the word fascia, I think earlier, or that's in my notes anyway, to talk about the fascia, um, and how this oh, yeah. exercise can help both of those. Yes, absolutely. I love those two are my favorite things. The, and Teresa pronounces it. It's kind of a debate on how it's supposed oh. to pronounce if it's supposed oh. to be fascia or fascia. And Teresa oh. says fascia, so I usually go with that. Okay. <laughs> okay. For okay. Yes. I know you wouldn't it. believe. <laughs> no, it's fine. I was just going to be like, so that you know that I'm not yeah. just, you know, subtly, you know, correcting you at all. <laughs> okay. That's what she said. <laughs> it's just how that's great. Says it. But, but yeah, okay. fascia and lymphatic system are like my favorite things about TTAP because that's really the meat of what TTAP is. So how she targets the lymphatic system is both by the sequence of TTAP, but also the technique. And she designed the sequence and that's the order in which the exercises are performed in and as a way to systematically pump the lymphatic system from your head to your toe. And real briefly, just to explain for those who may or not, maybe not familiar with the lymphatic system, um, it collects and carries lymphatic fluid so that there are the toxins that are in there can be safely eliminated from the body. And it also moves the liquefied fat. And it also brings white blood cells to sites that are in need of defense. So it's an immune, um, it's, it's part of your immune system, but it's also part of your fat burning system. Um, so all of the moves are centered around the lymphatic ducts that are in the areas of the clavicle, also in the groin, the armpit, the thoracic duct, which is in the middle of your back, like the back center of your back, your neck, and the fronts and the backs of your hands. And the fronts and the backs of the hands are things that people don't think are lymphatic, but they're very Mm -hmm. lymphatic. And you can't, it's hard to get at those lymph nodes Mm -hmm. in your day-to-day life. So she encourages all of these areas um, to empty the old lymph and then circulate new clean lymph with each move. And certain muscle contractions can also lead to the emptying of the lymphatic ducts nearby. So for example, the lats, which if you've watched any of her workouts or really anything that Teresa's done, you hear the lats over and over and over and everyone's like, what are the lats? And they're this, they're this muscle in the back part of your body. If you feel kind of where your bra strap ends, they, they kind of, mm-hmm. that's the middle of the lats. So um, and when you activate the lats on both sides of your body, they squeeze this duct, this storage depot for lymph called the thoracic duct. And when that is squeezed and encourages it to empty and that flushes out, it's kind of like um, taking the garbage disposal, you know, putting stuff down the garbage disposal. It gets it out of the body and it puts new clean lymph in its place. So this means that when you are able to supercharge your body's own natural detoxification systems, you can feel better, you perform better, you have less inflammation, you have better immune function. uh, And that's all related to the, how the lymphatic system and TTAP work together because it's both the sequence, but it's also the techniques and the squeezing. But the lymphatic system is also connected to the fascia and people really don't think of them as connected, um, but they really are because fascia is actually a sensory network of fibrous tissue. And it's kind of, it goes from thin and slippery tissue, like it's underneath your skin. And it it's also includes the more fibrous tissue that makes stuff like tendons and ligaments. And it's, it's one continuous network of tissue that is woven from head to toe. So it's almost like a head to toe continuous, if you're a knitter or crocheter, like a continuous knitted, um, like, place on your body that is just covers like a net. It's like a knitted net over your entire body. And when it's healthy in one place, it can, you know, promote health in others. It kind of travels the hydration of the fascia. When it's healthy, it will slide and glide and be nice and slippery and you can move well. 
Um, but when you age, it can become rigid and stiff. And this causes you to have, you know, less range of it, range of movement. It can increase inflammation and it can cause pain. And she understood from the beginning, there's a lot of fascia movements that she does, even in just, you know, the basic 15 minute workout. But over time, she has perfected even more to where she has specific workouts that specifically work the fascia. And the way that she works it is different than the typical, you know, uh, different kinds of stretching like myofascial release. It includes uh, leverage isometric muscle activation, which is basically pushing and pulling during moves on different parts of your body, targeted stretching techniques that stretch the fascial planes of your body because there's lots of different planes of movement of the fascia. And she studied those and knew what they were and how they operate together. And she targets those and even breathing properly. People don't think that breathing properly using your diaphragm, she calls it inhale big, exhale bigger. That can actually promote the circulation of your lymphatic fluid, which the lymphatic fluid then can help hydrate the fascia. So it's all interconnected together and when the, when the fascia is healthy, you will have good movement. You won't have that feeling, you know, when you get it, well, every, all of us, even me, and I'm like, you know, late twenties, you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, I just, everything's stiff and I need to stretch. And that, that feeling is, you know, your fascia needs some hydration. So woven within all of the movements mm. is the focus on the fascia, because when you can get the fascia operating well, you can get the muscles activating well, because there are actually more nerve endings in your fascia than there are in your muscles because every single little muscle fiber is encased in fascia. So every little, you know, if you've ever seen those diagrams of the muscle, like, a, you know, a bicep, and you see all those little tubes that look like, you know, that, that are the muscle fibers, that's all wrapped in fascia. And then those little tiny, tiny tendrils, those are wrapped in fascia too. So whenever you can get the fascia activated, you get even more muscle activated. So it all works together, the lymphatic system, the fascia and the muscles as well. That is so comprehensive. I mean, I, this is like a science lesson. So <laughs> this is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is kind of, <laughs> but, it, but it really, um, it makes sense why this sort of exercise could be so beneficial. Because again, if you're just watching this, if you pop in a DVD and you're just watching this in your living room, you're going to think, what is this? You know, it's just not, it doesn't seem like, you know, it's not like this intense uh, exercise, but it really, there's I, a lot going on. Yes. A lot. So when you say hydration, mm -hmm. you're talking more from like, from the push and pull and the targeted stretching and the breathing and getting it to slide and glide. It's not like hydration, like pounding water, right? Or well, it actually, it, and this too. is, I'm glad you, you, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because it is, you are bringing, when, when you stretch, you actually will bring the hydration to the fascia. But of course, you got to have water there in the first place. Uh -huh. So that's why if, if you watch some of her mm -hmm. DVDs or if you do, she gives you water breaks all the time. Yeah, <laughs> She's the, like the one that water. I just got that you, you recommended to me and I got, she'll go through a series of exercise and then she'll say, sip water. And then the screen kind of goes to like this like bubbly water picture for like a yes. few seconds. Makes you thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> it does. yeah. And you know what? And it's crazy because like by the time the exercise is over, I have down the entire uh, drink of water that I had beside me. And I wouldn't even do that yes. if I were on a treadmill or something, you know, because she's encouraging right. you to hydrate. And maybe because you're not like sweating and yeah. you know, breathing heavy and you're not thinking yes. like, oh, I better drink my water like you would if you were, you know, just finished running or something like that. So I love that she sets that reminder and it does work. So in conjunction with, you know, the movements that you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, she's always, she's big fan. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's amazing. Thank you for that explanation. Now you had shared with us that you're able to teach us a, a little one minute, try it with me chair exercise. Would you be willing to share that with us right now? Yes. Oh okay. yes. As long as Great. we're all sitting in chairs, we can do it. Yep. So yeah, <laughs> we are. Yeah. And this one, of course you can find this on, if you go to the YouTube channel, TTAP YouTube channel, this one, okay. right out there. but I want, it's okay. fun to be able to do it just so you can feel it a little bit, what it feels like. So, all right, so go ahead and first sit. I want you to sit with your sit bones on the edge of the chair. So kind of get out and wiggle out to the edge of your chair with okay. your sit bones. And once you're there, once you're sitting really tall, look at your feet. And I want your feet to be about one hand width apart between the ball joints. 
So it's, it's a little bit closer than you might be used to. But okay. now I want you to look and make sure your knees are stacked over your ankles. Make sure that you're not tucking your feet up underneath you. Okay. So from there, I want you to press your feet into the floor, just as if you were getting ready to stand up out of your chair. So press your feet into the floor and you'll feel yourself already start to get taller and engage the muscles. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to center the weight of pressing into your heel. So kind of shift it into your heel. Now you should start feeling your thighs <laughs> will start to turn on a little mm -hmm. bit from pressing. Yeah. Okay, now lift up all the toes and I want you to place extra emphasis on pressing the pad of the foot underneath the big toe into the ground. I know it's a wow. lot of details, but just press the ball joint that, that pad of the foot underneath the big toe into the ground. Now, I want you to just put your hands flat on your thighs and press your hands into your thighs, press your feet into the floor. And feel how when you press your hands into your thighs, you can get your ribs up, you can bring your crown of your head towards the ceiling as you press your hands into your thighs. Now, don't lose the feet. I want you to keep pressing the feet this whole time because that's important. So now I want you to think about your belly button. And on your next inhale, I want you to start below your belly button. Think to zip up your abs as if you were zipping up a sweater. You can hear it in my voice. It's a little bit hard. Now press your feet. <laughs> and now imagine Whoa. that there's a string pulling your belly button to the back wall. Now you'll notice your low back may get a little bit flatter. That's okay. But keep pressing the feet. Don't lose the feet. Now I want you to lift your ribs tall. Imagine like someone's pulling a string from your head to the ceiling. Keep breathing. Keep pressing your feet. Keep your core. Now I want you to press your hands into your thighs again to get your ribs even higher. Your heart rate should be getting up now. It's, you can hear it on here that I'm like, ah. okay, now keep your, keep your feet pressing. Keep your core. Now I want you to bring your hands straight out to the side like you're making a letter T with your body. But I want you to put your palms to the ceiling. All right, now I want you to move your thumbs to the back wall. Like if you looked at your hands, it would look like they were making a mitten. So stretch your thumb to the back wall as much as you can, and you'll start to feel those lats in the middle of your back start to activate. Now keep pressing the feet, keep curling, keep your ribs up. Now I want you to move slowly as if you're moving through mud. I want you to move your hands down towards the ground till they're about to the height of your waist. Keep stretching the thumb, keep pressing the feet. Take an inhale, exhale. Now I want you to move them slowly back up to your shoulders. Move really slow like you're moving through mud and stretch your thumbs to the back. And keep pressing your feet, keep curling your core, keep lifting your ribs, we'll go down and up. So now go down two, three, towards your waist height, and then bring your arms straight up, reaching straight out through your fingertips. And then go down, and then go back up, and then just drop your hands, relax your feet, relax your core, and just relax. <laughs> so that's just wow. a brief little, you know, it literally is like, it's probably more than a minute. I probably undersold it there, but yeah, anyway, it's, it's a little bit longer than a minute, but that, it's really gives you kind of a feel because she has workouts for the chair. She has workouts standing. She has workouts for the floor. And, you know, you'd never think that doing something in a chair could be challenging. It, and it really is. I have to tell you, I mean, I felt like my thighs were shaking. Yeah. I could feel like my, my back activating for sure, especially with the arm movements. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm sitting up taller now. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, for that one little, I, I really feel like that could be very toning for your muscles, but also I can just, like you said, your heart rate went up oh, yeah. even, and which is not something you would ever consider that you could be sitting down and having your heart yeah, rate go you up. Would, you would, you would never know? think that, yeah. you know, by looking at someone doing it either. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Right. And I just think about the people with desk jobs who are mm -hmm. sitting at a desk all day. Like, what a nice little yes, break. Yes, you know, It probably clears your mind a little bit. And if you do that simultaneously, you know, even, well, I guess you can't really do it while you're working. But, you know, take a little break and do it a couple times yes. a day at your desk job. You just got to Yeah, work out. and that will bring benefits. I actually know people who, by the way, pushing your feet into the floor will burn glucose. So I have people wow. who I will train who are, you know, either diabetic or they're just watching their blood sugar or they just like sweets, which I like sweets sometimes myself. So you will be able to push <laughs> your feet into the floor. I have um, a diabetic friend that I know who took her blood before and after doing, she ate something sugary, you know, her blood sugar was like what, 140 something, 150. She then took her blood and then it was, I think it was 70 
after she did the pushing her feet in the floor for like five minutes and, and she took it again and it can wow. really drop your blood sugar. So, you know, people who are sitting down at a desk job, you can do that. And, you know, just anytime you're sitting down, even if you're at a restaurant or something, you can still press your feet and it actually kind of wakes you up too. If you kind of are feeling that little, you know, end of the day slump, it really sure. will wake you up. <laughs> so. so this is really beneficial, just not only, you know, for desk jobs, but even for people who may have issues like with their feet, or, um, mm-hmm. you know, back or they, they're they not mobile. I'm even thinking of, you know, people in uh, wheelchairs or nursing homes or, you know, mm-hmm. anything that they could do some form of exercise. And what that is fascinating that, you know, I think our society in general are, there's so many of us who are pre-diabetic, diabetic, and that this could um, potentially help you lower your blood sugars. That, I mean, this is kind of like a little miracle exercise and you can do it so simply for, you know, you do this frequently throughout the day. Absolutely. Yes. And it's, it's very sneaky. It's, I call it sneaky fit. This is something that would fall under the, under the, um, my heading of sneaky fit tips. So just little stuff that you can add in throughout the day. So. Yeah, I love that, Margaret. Um, I wanted to ask you specifically because you are, you know, compared to Lori and I and some of our listeners, you are you are young, and so um, even though we've just talked about all of the science and the good things behind this, um, as you mentioned, you know, I think a lot of women, especially you know, twenties and thirties, are still doing the, um, you know, kind of intense exercises. We may be running or doing CrossFit and things like that. So you personally, I know that you do T-TAP um, every day, you mentioned. Do you incorporate any other form of exercise or is this about it for you? Right. So for me personally, I don't do anything else. And it took me a while to get there because I still kind of had, you know, I had in my mind, I've got to run X many miles a week. I've got to lift X many times per week. I still had that in my brain for a long time. But you know, after I started doing TTAP, I gave it like a two week trial just to see, like, I'm going to, I'm going to see what happens if I give up all of these other stuff and just try TTAP for two weeks. And it completely blew me away. I had less inflammation. Um, I actually had more muscle definition than I ever had than when I was doing all these other things that were supposed to give me, you know, muscle definition. So I personally don't, but the great thing about TTAP is that you can apply these techniques to any other exercise. So let's say you like to weightlift. You can actually apply some of these techniques to your weightlifting. If you like to walk, there are actually walking workouts that Teresa teaches that you can take the technique and apply it to your walk when you go to the park. You, If you like Pilates, you can actually apply some of these techniques to Pilates. So, you know, and it's, it's great that you can incorporate it in whatever you're already doing, but also you can, it's enough to support your fitness regardless of your fitness level. I mean, obviously if you're a pro athlete, you're going to want to train for your goals. So, you know, it, sure. it would be a help to you. I mean, my, my brother, for example, shout out to my brother Sullivan. He is a league um, ultimate Frisbee player and he's a, he's yeah. a guy, right? So TTAP does work for guys too. So any ladies listening who are thinking, wow, my husband could benefit from this. Yes, they can, but they don't really, you know, T-TAP sometimes is kind of something they look at like, really, this looks like it's for ladies, yeah. which it's not. Yeah. But anyway, my brother is, um, I believe he's 20. He just turned 20. He plays league ultimate Frisbee and he uses T-TAP um, in combination with, he does lift weights, but he uses T-TAP as a standalone workout with his weightlifting techniques and it helps him have a better game, helps him have better recovery. You know, everybody else on his team is getting hurt. And here he is, you know, flexible, feeling good, not sore, you know, so it can be incorporated into whatever, you know, whatever your goals are and whatever you're already doing, but also it is fantastic as a standalone workout. And if someone has, someone comes to me and says, Hey, my goal is to lose these inches so that I can fit back into my clothes that are in my closet. Um, I usually recommend that they give it a trial of two or three weeks of just T-tap kind of how I did at the beginning. Because, you know, if you're trying to lose inches, the way T-TAP works by itself is very different from something like weightlifting. Like it will, it can interfere sometimes with your inch loss results if you're you're using T-TAP with like another exercise. I kind of like, I'm really guilty of this though. I will add in something and then add in another thing and then I'll, you know, see, you know, my problem will be resolved and I'll be like, wait, was it this thing or was it that thing? So it's kind of a good way to test it 
and be able to be like, okay, this is going to work for me or this is not going to work for me, sort of. So um, it will, you know, giving it a trial, that way you can be a little scientific about it and be like, all right, this works great for me on its own, or I'm just going to add this to what I'm doing. So I think that's a great challenge for for us um, to, to just try that alone. And I think I'm going to do that myself because what I've been doing it is just doing it once or twice a week and doing other things. Um, but I, but I, but I like that. And I think you've sold me on the fact that, because I think, um, you know, as someone in now my mid forties, I think about, um, muscle and wanting to maintain that muscle. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I absolutely know that this helps with flexibility. The lymphatic drainage is, is just, that's so key for health in general. Um, your heart rate does naturally go up as Margaret mentioned, but I think that you just, what you just touched on was that this does help with muscle mass. Um, that's very important because we mm -hmm. all need that as we age. And, you know, and I was always thinking that I had to be lifting weights. Um, now I don't do any kind of heavy lifting, but, um, but I am going to give this mm -hmm. a try for a couple of weeks and, and just see, because I do, I, I feel it internally. Um, and, you know, Teresa mm -hmm. that she's talking about, she was, she was, she's pretty tall, right, Margaret? Was she... Was she tall? Yeah, she's about, she's about, well, she's not super tall. I think she's about five, seven. So. Okay. Well then uh, that, then yeah. that's interesting because she looks so much taller mm -hmm. in the videos. And I think she was very lean mm -hmm. by nature. Um, but she did have great, I mean, her arms looked wonderful, you know, in, in these videos and it's probably her posture that makes her yeah. look so much taller. Right? That's right. <laughs> I, I would say, yeah, but I yes. mean, so this woman was not flabby, <laughs> you know what I mean? And she's not doing any other form of exercise. She looked very fit, um, as do you, Margaret, <laughs> for for sure. And so, oh, okay. I, I, yeah. <laughs> so this is this is very interesting, and I think this is um, this is a great challenge. It's something I'm gonna I'm gonna look into. I'm gonna try it too. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, I, we're coming towards the end of, of our interview, but what I did, one thing I did want to touch on with you, you are an NTP, which is um, something that, you know, has, is, is so of interest to me. She's a nutritional therapy practitioner, so she knows a lot um, about nutrition, but how does nutrition play into um, TTAP exercise? And do, could you give any kind of um, nutritional advice or recommendations that my partner with TTAP how do, you, how do you go about um, presenting the nutrition aspect to, to women or your clients? Sure. Yes. So I will usually, if I have someone coming to me that wants the nutritional advice and TTAP, I kind of go slowly with both of those because sometimes it can okay. be hard to add in two new components at once. So I will usually go a little bit slower on one of them. But uh, yes, nutrition is very, very important. And Teresa talked a lot about this. She actually had a plan that she made that's called the God made man made plan. And it's kind of a very moderation based, based approach where you kind of have two days of eating, you know, like what we would say is more of a paleo or a clean eating style. And then on the third day, you're allowed to kind of relax and, you know, have the popcorn at the movie theater or have the piece of cake at dinner. And that's kind of her approach. And it's very, it's very, it's very moderate and, I think it allows people who are just getting into doing more healthy habits, gives them a little bit of wiggle room. So that's sometimes what, that's what Teresa's, you know, official TTAP stance on the nutrition was. But um, as a nutritional therapist, I will oftentimes make it a little bit more tailored for people because that's the beauty of um, nutritional therapy is it's very bio-individual. So what might look good on, you know, as a plan for one person may not work for another person. So I kind of take a very specific bio-individual approach to see how people are digesting their food, how are they assimilating the nutrients, what kind of things do we need to focus on most for nutrition. And as far as hormones go, you know, TTAP's great for balancing hormones because when you can get the blood sugar under control, you can give those organ handle and I handle the disposal of old hormones such as the liver, you can give those a break. And so that's, you know, eating a diet that is balanced. Um, that is, you don't go too long between meals, um, making sure that you remove any food stressors that you may be allergic to, or you notice your body doesn't react well to, um, it can give the break, give a break to an organ like the liver who is already, you know, doing 500 plus jobs a day. Um, and I also recommend, um, depending on where a woman is in her life, something like, this is a little tip that I will sometimes give people too. Um, it's called seed cycling and you may have heard of it, but 
it's where it's a nutritional technique for helping your body Mm -hmm. make hormones um, at the appropriate times of the month. So, you know, it, you can even use it if you're menopausal, you can use it if you are still young and of childbearing age, it's, it's versatile for everyone. And it actually works. I know people who've used it along with TTAP for helping balance their hormones. Cause of course, TTAP does help with that, but you can add in something like seed cycling. You can Google it just seed cycling. If you just did seed cycling um, plan, it will tell you exactly what to do, but you basically, you eat, eat some seeds that are the, the, um, the fats in them will help your body synthesize estrogen in the beginning part of your cycle. And then at the latter part of your cycle, you take in some seeds that will help the fatty acids of which will help your body produce more progesterone. So you can kind of help your body help itself, which is what Teresa is all about anyway. But that's one way specifically for women who can use that to help them balance their hormones um, in, a, in a natural way in conjunction with, you know, eating a balanced diet that has, you know, blood sugar balance at its core for women and their hormones. Okay. That's really interesting. I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes to um, seed cycling. We'll find that. I, I have heard of that. And I, that's interesting that you just mentioned that you could do it into menopause because I didn't really think about that. I just thought, um, you know, about women who were of childbearing years, but that's interesting that that could help because we do, um, still produce a, a little bit <laughs> of mm-hmm. hormones, you know, as you know, in menopause and some women, especially as they're going into menopause and, and dealing with all of the hot flashes and things, seed cycling could be something that they could incorporate, um, to, to maybe help ease some of those symptoms. Yes, definitely. So that's, yeah, so that's interesting. And also I'm going to put a, you said that the, the one minute, um, chair exercises on YouTube as well. Yes, I can so send that. To you okay, you. that'd be great because I'll put that in the show notes too. Because um, there might be people who were driving or something while, while we were doing that, and I should have said that ahead of time. That we'll, right. we'll disclaimer: put like Not that. do this in the car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do actually have. I have had tips for people in the car for road trips, and I have ah. put a disclaimer. Please do not do yeah. this if you're the driver, unless you really feel comfortable. No, because I I don't want anybody to, to wreck from you know pulling on the steering wheel to get your ribs up. So. <laughs> Yeah. That would not be good. Yeah. No, not at all. Um, so I, I think we've covered most of the questions that we were going to talk about. Um, I just, just lastly, what I w- would want to ask you is, you know, if people are interested in working with you, Margaret, what kind of services do you provide for um, your clients? Yeah, so I, because TTAP is kind of sometimes hard to figure out at first. I mean, I know I was not the only one. Um, I, that's why I decided to become a TTAP trainer so that I can offer one-on-one training in person or um, over web streaming. I also have a couple of online courses. I have one course called um, Secrets to Success with TTAP. That's a video series. Um, So I have different courses available or working one-on-one to help you understand TTAP and help you understand, you know, how it works in the form of TTAP. And in addition to that, and sometimes in conjunction with that too, I also do nutrition coaching um, using a bio-individual approach, and I work with women of all ages or ha- and health concerns, whether it's someone transitioning to menopause, someone with autoimmune or thyroid conditions, adrenal fatigue. Um, I've worked with a couple of athletes, women who are recovering from childbirth, pregnancy, anything that pertains to health and nutrition. I will be able to make personalized plan recommendations, and then it works beautifully in, con- in conjunction with TCAP. I really have been happy with having both those components because it's, to me, it's the best of both worlds to be able to offer, offer to clients. Awesome. Awesome. So if people would like to reach you, how can they reach you? Yes. So I have a website, which is actually new. Um, and that's at www.mb, my initials, Margaret Berry dash fitness.com. And I am also on Instagram and my handle there is underscore muscles and motherhood. Just all spelled out in one word. And I would really recommend that you follow her on Instagram. She has, um, I have learned so much just by some of your posts, Margaret, she'll show even like side by side pictures of this is how you stand. She had one of her, um, pushing a baby, uh, stroller and this is how you stand when you mm-hmm. do this. Um, and this is not, this is what you should not do. And this is proper alignment for this exercise. And this is what you should not do. And so just little things like that. And she'll put links, um, you know, to her website on Instagram. So 
you, you really want to go and follow her on Instagram. But we'll also put a link to her website in the show notes as well. That's right. We'll do that. Well, Margaret, thank you so much. We have learned so much from you today. And I know our listeners will be so appreciative of that too. So just thank you so much for leaving time in your schedule to meet with us today. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. This, this was a lot of fun. And I, I always love talking about love talking about TTAP. So as you, as if you could, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> it was so nice to, it was so nice to meet you both yeah, too. Me too, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you so All much. right. Thanks so much. Wasn't Margaret just a wealth of knowledge? I loved interviewing her. If you're interested in learning more about TTAP or want to purchase a DVD, a link to her site is available in the show notes. For more from Kim, you can go to kimmarovich.com. For more from Lori, go to simplyempoweredllc.com. We're always open to listener questions or suggestions for the show. You can email those to contact at a whole new you podcast.com. We'd also love it if you joined our Facebook community and followed us on Instagram. Just search for A Whole New You Podcast. And if you'd be so kind as to leave us a review in iTunes, we'd really appreciate it so that more people can find our show and join our community. See you next week.